To follow along with the written version of this pattern and download the interactive PDF, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash ornament. Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to crochet a super simple no-sew Christmas tree ornament. I love this pattern. I think it's super cool. Um, I love the fact that there's no sewing at all. You even, I even show you how to make the little loop at the top. And I have a few different techniques in this video that are a little bit more advanced, uh, that are completely optional, but a little bit more advanced for those that want to try something new with their crochet. So I hope you like this video. Uh, I took my time with it so that it is made for complete beginners with no sewing uh, or no crochet um, prior to this pattern. So if you are a complete beginner, I hope this pattern works for you. If you do have any questions, obviously let me know in the comments. Now, this pattern is part of a whole collection of patterns that I have, um, a lot of which you can see on screen now. These are all my Christmas themed patterns. There's a bunch of them from little Santas, even to a tiny itty bitty um, Christmas tree light. There's a Christmas tree itself and even a, a present gift box that actually can be opened. Um, I am super proud of these patterns. If you find, want to find any of them, you can find links to them in the description or by going to clubcrochet.com slash Christmas. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say? Uh, da, 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 da. I guess a few just housekeeping things. Um, this pattern is pretty beginner friendly, but if you have never ever crocheted before in your life and find this pattern a little bit more difficult, even though I do take my time, try out my complete beginner series that is designed with no crochet prior. That is going to be my 101 series, Crocheting 101. You can find it completely for free down in the description or at crocheting101.com. That's going to take you through all the techniques that you're going to need to learn how to crochet. Also, if you want extra help, um, you can comment down below. Uh, check out my live crochet alongs. I do, I do a live crochet along pretty much every single week where you can join in, ask any questions that you might have while we're crocheting, or just hang out and crochet along with me. It's a great opportunity for you to ask for very specific help, and I can show you live on camera. There's also a Discord channel and a Facebook group that are both great options for posting pictures to and asking for help from the community. I'm in it quite often, but if I'm not, there's going to be someone there that can help you out. So go check those out. Again, the links are in the description. There's also a left-handed and a right-handed version of this video. So make sure to use the version of the video that you uh, are best at, you know, that your hand is made for. Um, and then finally, there are time codes so that if you want to quickly jump around in this pattern, jump to round five or round six, use the time codes linked in the description um, or at the bar at the base of this video or in the PDF version of this pattern, there's also time codes there. Um, okay, well, without further ado, uh, let's, oh wait, there is one more thing I wanted to tell you. I do have an advent calendar that's going on right now where you can get a new free crocheted thing from the uh, from the library every single day. Um, you can find the links to that in the description, but get them while you can. You can only download one thing from the advent calendar every single day, but there's a bunch of free stuff there. Um, check out links in the description for that. Okay. Well, before we get going, let's talk about all the materials that you're going to need to crochet this pattern along with me. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. Let's start with the tools. We're gonna to be using a crochet hook size G four millimeter in this pattern. Um, that's my favorite size crochet hook to use for the yarn we're gonna be using, which is worsted weight cotton yarn, but we're gonna to get to that in just a second. Um, I suggest using one with a little handle. It just makes things a little bit easier. And of course, our crochet hooks are available in the shop if you're interested. You'll need a darning needle too. Uh, I like using a crimped end darning needle. This is only gonna be used for sewing our ornament closed. You actually don't need this for sewing anything together. So you don't really need a crimped end, but it does make it a little bit easier to to get in, in and out of hard to reach stitches. You'll need a pair of scissors for, you know, the whole cutting stuff. Uh, and then we're going to be pulling the materials themselves from our brand new seasonal crochet cut holiday hooks, which includes all the materials to make a whole variety of different patterns. Um, obviously you won't need to pin for this pattern, but we will use a few different materials here. We're going to be using the colors red for our main color and we'll need yellow for the top of your ornament. Now you can use any kind of colors that you want for your ornament. Uh, if you want to make your top in like gray and then the main in like really any color that you want for a Christmas ornament, um, you can. But I'm going to be using yellow and red because, you know, it's just kind of classic. Uh, 
I'm using worsted weight cotton yarn in this pattern. We're using our own amigurumi cotton yarn. It's my favorite yarn to use for amigurumi, as I said before, um, but you can use pretty much any kind of yarn that you want. Just make sure to use the right crochet hook for whatever weight yarn you end up using. Um, I just really like cotton yarn for amigurumi in general. We'll use just the tiniest little bit of white uh, for the cheeks of our ornament. And then uh, what you can also add, we'll need some black thread, but you can also, uh, and and, and of course it has the stuffing too, but you can also use, there's a little bell included in your kits if you got the holiday hooks kit. And this is kind of fun to add in the center of your um, ornament if you want to, to make it ring. Uh, you don't have to, of course, but it's just kind of fun, little extra thing that you can add. Let's see, is there anything else? Um, we have a keychain. If you don't want to add, uh, use the yarn for the top, you can use that. Uh, and, uh, oh, of course you'll need safety eyes. We're gonna be using six millimeter safety eyes in this pattern. Uh, it's my favorite sized eyes to use uh, for these this pattern, but you can use any kind of sized eye if you have different sizes. Um, you can also use embroider eyes uh, using the bullion knot, which I have a tutorial for somewhere around here as well. Now, if you wanna get a crochet kit just like this, it's a great way to support the channel. Um, it comes with all the materials you need to make this pattern, as well as a bunch of different alternative uh, holiday themed patterns, including things like a turkey leg, uh, a pumpkin, uh, things for all the different holidays in the fall season, um, as well as a giant Christmas tree and stuff like that. These are available in the shop. They also uh, come with three months of Club Crochet membership, which give you access to the entire Club Crochet library, which is a whole bunch of other alternative patterns so that not only uh, can you make the patterns designed for this kit, but there's also a like 30 something alternative patterns that can be made with this kit that you also have access to. So it's a great kit uh, for making really anything that you want. And it even acts as a, a yarn holder. I'm not gonna rip it open right now, but you can actually rip the kit itself open to make it a yarn holder, which I'm really proud of for the design. I designed all of this, by the way, it is 100% designed by me, myself, and I. Uh, so yeah, if you wanna support me and what's going on here, uh, this is a great way to do so. Okay, well, without further ado, let's finally get crocheting. Uh, we're gonna start by making the top of this pattern. It's all made in one piece. So we're gonna start with our yellow yarn to make the top of our Christmas ornament. Okay, so we're gonna start with our yellow yarn and we're gonna start with the magic loop method. Now, if you've never made the magic loop before, don't worry about it, I'm gonna show you how really quick, but if you'd like a more in-depth tutorial, I have a video tutorial right here that goes through a few different methods and why I like one method more than the others. But for a magic loop, we're gonna take our yarn, starting with our yellow yarn, facing towards the ground. Now you can use any kind of yarn. You don't need to use yellow yarn. Uh, whatever you want the top of your ornament to be is the color you wanna start with. Um, take the yarn facing down towards the ground and pinch it with your middle and thumb finger and then use your ring and pinky finger of your non-dominant hand to hold the yarn in place like that. Now we're gonna go over our index finger and middle finger two times. We're looking to create an X on the front towards you and two parallel lines on the back of your hand away from you, like so. We'll take this end and pull it in with the rest of our yarn right here, just to hold everything into place. And we see that we have our little X on the front. Now we'll take our hand facing backwards towards, uh, so that the parallel bars are facing us. Take your crochet hook and go under that first bar like this, and then hook onto the second one like that. Then we'll pull this second bar under the first one and loop it around to create a little loop on the crochet hook. Now going over that first bar, we're gonna hook onto the second one. You might need to use your finger to help guide the yarn onto your crochet hook like that. Once it's on your crochet hook, you wanna pull it through the loop that's on the hook. To do that, the easiest way I found is to twist the yarn slightly. Just twist it and scoop it like that. That's the easiest way to get through that loop. So you're twisting and you're scooping it like that to get all the threads through the loop. Once you've pulled through that loop, we've created a chain and we can pull our fingers out and it should hold the magic loop in place. Now I'm gonna pull this tail end just a little bit to close this up, um, but you're, you wanna leave a pretty long tail end here because we're going to use it to create the loop at the top of your ornament as well, um, which we'll do in round two. 
Okay, so that's going to be the magic loop. Now we're gonna start with round one of our ornament. Now this pattern is worked in the round without turning at all. So we're just gonna keep working around in a spiral. And we're going to be using single crochets for pretty much the entirety of this pattern. For a single crochet, I'm gonna show you in just a second. Um, but it is a very uh, popular stitch, so you probably know it. And we're going to start with round one by single crocheting six times into the center of our loop, into the hole right there. Now, for a magic loop, if you've never made one, or I mean, for a single crochet, if you've never made one before, you want to take your crochet hook and go into the stitch. In this case, the magic loop itself is our stitch. So we're going to take our crochet hook and go under our stitch like this, and then we're going to loop over our, or yarn over with our end attached to the ball, onto our crochet hook. And then we're gonna pull that under the stitch, which in this case is our big loop. Now we're gonna go over the stitch and yarn over again onto the crochet hook. And then we're gonna pull that on the, the last loop on the crochet hook through the other two loops on the hook. And again, the easiest way is to twist your yarn so that it is parallel with the loops and then scoop it through like that to pull through both loops there. And that's gonna be how you make a single crochet. And again, this pattern is made almost entirely with single crochets. As we get to round two, I'll show you where exactly you wanna put those single crochet stitches so that they go into the right places. But for round one, we just wanna make six of those single crochets into the center of our magic loop. So we did one right there. Let's do a second one. Into the magic loop, yarn over, pull it under, and then going over it, we yarn over again, and pull through two with a twist and a tuck, like that. We wanna do six of those, so there's one, two, here is three, and four, and then we have five and six, like that. Now you should have six single crochets now in a row. If you wanna count your stitches, the easiest way to do so is to count the Vs coming out uh, at the end of your stitches. You can see where this loop is coming out. Where that loop is coming out is gonna be your last single crochet that you made. So we got one right here, two, three, four, five, and six. This one right here, the first single crochet that we made is going to be very important. It's gonna be hard to get into, but that's where we're gonna start for round two. We're gonna work into this stitch. So keep note of where that one is. Now, before I pull our magic loop tight and close this end up, we wanna place a, a stitch marker into the center of our magic loop. That way we can keep track of where we're at in the rounds. I'm just gonna use this small amount of uh, like light blue yarn that I have left over. I'm just gonna put it right into the center of the magic loop. Oops, right into the center. There we go. And then I'm gonna pull this tail end and it should tighten around this extra yarn, which is gonna help us keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. This is my favorite way to use a stitch marker, by the way, uh, and highly suggested for pretty much all your Amigurumi projects. It makes things a lot easier. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fold this stitch marker yarn over like so, so that way it's easier to keep track of. And we're just gonna kind of ignore it and have it on the back side of our piece. And then we'll uh, continue on to round two. Now, as we do round two here, we want to note a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is that our round two is gonna consist of six increased stitches. So it's going to be an increase into every single stitch that you made in round one. That's gonna bring your stitch count up from six stitches, which you currently have, up to 12 stitches. An increase just means that there's two single crochets into the same spot. And the spot specifically that you're going to work your single crochets into is under both of the the loops in the Vs that are at the edge of your yarn. So under both of these loops at the same time, you can see how there's these little Vs all the way around it. And that's what we're gonna work into. The first one is always without fail, the hardest one to get into. So you wanna make sure that you get under both of these loops when you work it. When we get into round three, we're only gonna work into the back loop only, meaning the one furthest away from us. And later we're gonna only work into the front loop only. But for the majority of this pattern, you wanna work into both loops simultaneously. Okay, so that's the first thing is that it's just gonna be six increases to go up to 12 stitches around. But the other important thing that is very specific to this pattern is that we want to make a loop that comes out the top of our piece. And to do that, how we're gonna do that is we're going to start 
our round two by single crocheting or by working around this tail end for the first half of our round two. And then we're gonna pull a loop through the center and then continue working around this tail end for the last few stitches to keep it locked into place. For now, just start by getting your crochet hook into our first stitch. So we're gonna go into our first stitch right here. The easiest way is to kind of po uh, place it right under the loop and then kind of like wiggle it and push it under those stitches like that so that you're under both of those loops at the same time. Again, this first one is always the hardest one to get into. After this one, it's a lot easier. Okay, so we're under that loop. We wanna take our tail end, place it over the crochet hook as well, and then we're going to yarn over with the end attached to the ball onto our crochet hook, and then we're gonna pull it under those two loops with a twist and a tuck like that to get under both of those loops at the same time. Now we're going to yarn over again with the end attached to the ball and pull through our two loops, one and two, to do our first single crochet of our first increase. Now for our second single crochet here in this round, we're gonna work into the exact same stitch because we want it to be an increase and an increase just means two single crochets in the same spot. So follow where this V here is and follow where that goes into. And that's gonna be the same stitch that you just worked into. So you wanna place your crochet hook right where that's pointing, like that. So take your crochet hook, go into that same stitch, poke it through, make sure your tail end is still placed over the yarn so we're working around it. And then we can yarn over with the end attached to the ball, twist and tuck to get it under that stitch, and then yarn over again and pull through two loops at the same time for our first increase. That's gonna be the second single crochet and the uh, end of our first increase because there's two stitches in the same spot. And you kind of see how they're kind of bunched together the, there into one place. Okay, so we're gonna do an increase into every stitch around. So let's go into the next stitch over. So if this stitch right here was the last one, the next one's gonna be right here under both of these loops. It's a fresh stitch that has no stitches, uh, single crochets in it yet. So we're gonna take our crochet hook Go under both of those loops, just place it into place, and then kind of wiggle until your crochet hook's under that. Take our tail end, place it over the crochet hook, yarn over, and twist, tuck to get under that stitch, yarn over again, and pull through two for our third single crochet and the start of our second increase. Now we want another stitch into the same spot, so we're going to go right into that exact same stitch, yarn over again, and pull it through. Going over the stitch, yarn over, and pull through two. And that's gonna be the end of our second increase. Now we wanna do one more increase before we do something with this tail end. So we're gonna go into our next stitch right here and do our third increase, getting under those stitches, yarn over at the end, attach the ball, pull through, going over the stitches, pull through two. One more into that same stitch. There we go. That's going to be our sixth stitch and our third increase finished. Now after this stitch, before we continue to do our last three increases to get to the end of the round, we want to make that loop at the top of our um, ornament. So we're going to take our crochet hook and kind of loop out like that so that this doesn't come apart. So just leave that there. This is just so we can get our crochet hook free. And we're going to go straight into the center of our piece right here, right into the center with our crochet hook, and then take the tail the very start of the tail end right here, yarn over and pull it through that loop in the center. Now don't pull it all the way through, leave some on the inside, and this is where you can decide how long you want the loop at the end. So if you wanna hang this on a tree, maybe that's a little long, we'll go like that long right there. Now you can adjust this later, but it's good to have a general idea of how long you want that loop before you finish there. Okay, once you've done that, place your crochet hook back into the loop for the rest of our yarn here. And we're gonna keep working our stitches and we're gonna work around this tail end again for our last uh, three increases so that this tail end, this yellow tail end gets locked into place as we go. So we'll go into the next stitch right here, yarn over with the end attached to the ball, pull it through, yarn over again. Oh wait, before we yarn over and pull through, we wanna make sure that this tail end is placed over the end so that it's between the two loops on the hook and the end attached to the ball. And then we'll yarn over with the end attached to the ball and pull it through to work around this tail end as we go. So there's one, we wanna work 
another one into the same stitch because this is an increase like the rest of our stitches in this round. So into that same stitch, yarn over and pull it through. Yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so that's gonna be our fourth increase made and see how we're still working around this tail end. We wanna keep doing that for the last two increases here. So next increase is our next stitch right here. And just do another increase. One and two, I can kind of speed up now. And then our final increase right here will be one and then into the same stitch for two. And that'll be the end of round two. And you can kind of see how we have this little loop there. Pretty nice. Okay, so now this loop is actually done. We can just place this end off to the side. We'll take our tail, our, our stitch marker here and just fold it over our piece like this so that we can keep track of where the ends of the rounds are and we can continue on to round three. Now round three is gonna be a little bit tricky. Um, it, it can be as tricky as you want it to be, to be completely honest, because you can, um, I am going to show you the basic way to do this. Um, essentially in round three here, we're gonna work into the back loops only. So only the loop furthest away from us. Normally we've been working into both loops like this, right, for our single crochets. But for round three, we wanna work only into the back loops of these stitches as we go around. This is going to create a very sharp edge for where the top of our, um, our ornament is. See, so we're doing round three, which is gonna make this sharp edge here. Now there is a technique that I have that makes it even sharper of an edge. Um, this is, this one is made using that technique and you can see how clean that edge is. It's almost a perfect 90 degree angle. Now you do not have to use this technique, but it is pretty nice, especially if you're already a crocheter and you are used to doing stitches like this. This is a nice technique to use for other patterns. I use this for just a bunch of variety of patterns like the top of a Frankenstein head and stuff like that. Um, but before we do this little special technique, we want to slip stitch into our first stitch that we made and chain one. The idea here is that we want to create like a perfect bar up. And if we just keep working around with a spiral and don't do the slip stitch and chain, it's going to make it just a little bit messy and it'll be very clear where the end of the round is. So instead, what we want to do is go into the first stitch right here, yarn over with the end, pull it through that stitch and then through the loop on the hook to create a slip stitch. That's gonna create a slip stitch right there. Now what we wanna do is yarn over and chain one and that's gonna get this round started. So you see how it kind of like closes that uh, circle up and then now we're adding upon it. This is just a very subtle way to make the end of the round just a little bit cleaner. Okay, so for this round, before I continue on, um, you're going to be doing just a single crochet into the back loops only of all the stitches around. There should be 12 stitches around. Now, as we do that, however, we want to be working into the back loops only. So if you were under both loops like this, where we just did our slip stitch, that would be both loops, whereas the back loop would just be this one. Now, there is, however, a way to make that uh, even cleaner. And the trick is that not only do you want to work into this back loop only, but also this loop on the back of your stitches. If you can get your crochet hook under both of them, this one and this one at the same time, it'll make it even cleaner of, a, um, of an angle. Advanced technique, not completely important. You can just instead work under only this back loop and honestly, it works perfectly fine as well. But this is just a nice little advanced technique for those out there that wanna try to push themselves. So we're gonna start in our first stitch that we made. So we're gonna start in the same stitch that we made our slip stitch into. We wanna work into the back loop, meaning this one right here. So this is the same stitch we just worked into. We wanna work into this back loop and this loop on the back at the same time. It's kind of confusing, but it's really nice uh, when we finish it. So we're gonna take our crochet hook. We've made our slip stitch in our chain one. And now we're gonna take our crochet hook and place it under that back loop only and get it under that back loop. And then we're also, actually, I kinda of like to have both of them at the same time. So kinda of like this. And I usually need to use my nail to help get me under the extra back loop. The first back loop is pretty easy. It just can go under it, right? But the second one can be a little tricky. You kinda of wanna like 
hold it down with your na uh, nail and then kind of pry your crochet hook under that one because it really doesn't want the crochet hook in there, um, but it makes it look really nice. So you can kind of see how we're under, technically we're under two loops, but we're only under the back loop and the inside loop. Now we can yarn over with the yarn, pull it through those both those loops with a twist and a scoop to really make sure you're under both those loops. And I always like to pull it a little tighter and then yarn over and pull through two loops like that to do our single crochet. So that's going to be our first stitch made. Now again, you can just keep working into this front loop only, but instead I'm going to make sure I go under that front loop and this, I mean, sorry, under the back loop and the inside loop right there. Just a little trick that makes it a little bit cleaner of an end. And we're just gonna keep single crocheting all the way around. We're looking to get 12 stitches total. So if you wanna count your stitches, it's probably a good idea. So we got one, two, three, and four. Then we got five, you can see how after you start to get it, especially if you use your nail to help hold the loop down as you get your crochet hook in there and kind of pry it under, it gets a little bit easier to do. Okay, so I believe that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One and two, like that. It's gonna be seven. And there's eight. Front loop, I mean back loop and inside loop will be nine. Only a few more. One and two. Like that, see how I'm just kinda like pry it into it? This is the only time you're going to need to do this, by the way. Um, where, what, how many stitches was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we have two more here. So it'll be this one. 11, and then one more will be right here. Back loop and back loop will be, oopsies. Let's try that again. One, two, like there. So you can kind of see how it doesn't really want to get into that back loop. You see how it kind of went around it and left a little bit left over? We don't want that. We want to try to get under all those loops at the same time. There we go, just like that. That'll be 12. Now, before I pull through with our yellow to finish this round up, we want to get our main color ready. So we're going to go ahead and grab our red because we'll be using red for this pattern. And we're going to place it in between the two loops on the hook and the end attached to the ball like that. And then we'll still yarn over with our yellow and pull it over and through those two loops. And this is going to help keep our red, our main color in place. Okay. Now we can also pull our stitch marker color up and just fold it over and uh, continue on to um, our round four. Um, well, actually, before we even continue on to round four to finish round three, we do want to slip stitch into the first single crochet that we made. So the very first single crochet that we made, which is right here, you can tell it's the first one because you can see where it's under that first front loop and you see that this little V right here. You want to make sure we're into this stitch right here. So you wanna work under both loops and do a slip stitch. This is just gonna close everything up and make everything a little bit uh, cleaner. So we're going to go into both of those loops, under both of them at the same time like that, yarn over with our yellow and just slip stitch. So we're gonna pull through that stitch and then through the loop on the hook like that. Now we wanna change over to red yarn. So we're gonna take our red yarn place it in between these two loops. So in between, or I'm sorry, yeah, between the one loop on our uh, on our crochet hook and the end attach the ball. And we're gonna take our index finger of our non-dominant hand, go in between the two colors and then flip the new color, our main color, under the old one so that it's on top like that. Yarn over with our new color and just pull it through the loop to create a chain in our new color. I also like to pull the old color a little tighter and now we can continue on to round uh, four working in our main color. 
We can also cut this, uh, our main colors, yarn, I mean, our top colors yarn uh, a little short. You don't need to cut it too short, just about that short's probably fine. We still wanna work around it for one stitch just to keep it locked into place. Um, but it's nice to, you know, have a little bit more uh, room to work with. I also wouldn't cut our first tail end too short just yet because if this loop gets pulled in too much by accident, you can pull this tail end again to pull it a little tighter. Okay, so now we're on to round four. For round four, we're gonna work into the front loops only. So before where we worked under um, the back loop only, meaning the one furthest away from us right there, in this round, instead, we're gonna work into the front loop. So only the one closest to us. We're not working into both loops. We're not working into the back loop. We're working into the front loop right there. We're gonna actually start, this is actually our second single crochet. We're gonna start in the same stitch that you made your slip stitch. So right there, you wanna work under that front loop only. So you can kind of see where that slip stitch is. That's where you wanna work into. For this round, we want to do one single crochet into our first front loop and then an increase into our second front loop or two single crochets into our second front loop. So we're gonna do a one single crochet in the first and increase into the second, and then we'll repeat that process all the way around. We're looking for six repeats total. This is gonna bring your stitch count up from 12 stitches, which is what we currently have, up to 18 stitches, which is what we'll have at the end of round four. So we want one single crochet in the first one, and the first one's a little tricky because it's right where that slip stitch was, and then an increase into the next one. And we wanna make sure that we're only working in the front loops only as we do this round. Okay, so our first one right here, front loop only, like so. Yarn over, pull it through that stitch for our first single crochet. Now we're gonna take our tail end here of, uh, from our last yarn, place it in between the two loops on the hook and the one attached to the ball, yarn over and pull it through those two loops to finish up that first single crochet. And that's just gonna be enough to keep that yarn locked into place and we can kind of just tuck it on the inside now. So there's our first single crochet in our main color. Now we want to do our next stitch, which is gonna be an increase. So we're gonna go into that front loop only and do an increase. So two single crochets into that same stitch. There's one and two for our first increase. And you can kind of see how that re repeat is being created. So we've got single crochet one, increase one, front loops only all the way around. Let's keep doing that. That's our first repeat. We want six total of repeats. So this is gonna be our second repeat, single crochet one, and then increase one, still working only in those front loops, one and two. And you see how that's gonna create another uh, 90 degree angle. So it's like boop, boop, boop. Okay, we'll just keep doing that around. Single crochet one, this is our third repeat, increase one, and don't forget you're only working into those front loops as you go. You can see I can get a little bit quicker now. It's gonna get a lot easier now that we've made the top of our ornament. Single crochet one, increase one. Single crochet one right here, and then an increase right here. All right, and we got two more stitches to work with. So we've got one single crochet into our first stitch you can kind of see it was not, it didn't really want my crochet hook to go under all of it. It was going under only like part of that stitch. You can see how it's kind of splitting that stitch. So you want to really make sure you're under both of those or the full uh, amount of yarn, not splitting it. So there's our last single crochet as normal. And then finally one increase into our last stitch right here. So that's one and two like that. And that's going to be the end of round four. You should now have 18 stitches around. And if you wanna count your stitches, just count the Vs at the edge of all these stitches around. Okay, so we're gonna pull our stitch marker up now. We'll just take, we don't want it to get too tangled on the inside here. So try to get all this other yarn out of the way. We're gonna take this blue yarn and just fold it over and completely ignore it. And we're gonna take the rest of this yarn right here, just kind of like tuck it on the inside. Okay. So now we are on round five. You don't need to do a slip stitch or anything for round five. You can just start by working into the top of uh, the last stitches that you made. And for this round, we're working 
finally into both loops again. And we're gonna be working into both loops for the majority of the rest of this pattern. We will work only in the front loops again when we get to our decreases, but for the majority of the pattern, you can just work under both loops now, and you don't have to worry about back loop or front loop or any weird thing like that. For round five, we're going to do five single crochets and then one increase. And then we'll repeat that process three times total. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven will be our increase. And then we'll repeat that three times, which is gonna bring our stitch count up from 18 up to 21 stitches. So we'll have 21 at the end of round five. But we're gonna start on our first one right here. We'll do a single crochet into the first five stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, and five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. Now we'll do an increase into the next one right here. So two into the same stitch. So there's one and two. And then we'll repeat that process two more times. So three times total. So here's our second repeat. One, two, three, four, and five and then our increase after that right here. Six and seven into the same stitch. And that's actually gonna be our 14th stitch total. All right, last repeat here, five single crochets and then an increase. One, two, three, four, and five. And then our increase right here for six and seven, AKA 21. That's gonna be actually our 21st stitch and the end of our round. So that's gonna be the end of round five. We'll pull our stitch marker up, just fold it over. And now we can continue on to round six. Now you can kind of see how it's getting a lot easier as we go here and we can just start continually working around both loops as we go around for the rest of this pattern. Okay, so for round six, we're gonna increase up yet again. We're going up now from 21 stitches to 24 stitches. To do that, we're going to do six single crochets and then an increase, repeating that same process three times total. Um, okay, so six single crochets. We're gonna start in our first one right after our stitch marker. Will be one, two, and three, four, five, and six single crochets, and then an increase after that right here. One and two into the same stitch. There's the end of our first repeat. So we'll repeat that again now. Six single crochets and then an increase. And hey, as I do these next two repeats, if you haven't yet, please consider liking this video down below and subscribing to the channel. It's a great way to support the channel and it's totally free. By liking the video and subscribing, you do help push this video up into more people's algorithms and kind of spread the joy of crochet in general and help support this channel at the same time. So you should really consider doing so. Uh, that would be really cool. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching in, <laughs> in general. I really appreciate it. Um, I spent a long time designing all these patterns, so it's really cool just to know that other people enjoy making the things that I designed. It just, it means the world to me, so thank you. So finishing up our very last increase right here, and that's going to be the end of round six, and you should now have 24 stitches around. You can kind of see how that's working up. And we'll take our tail end here, fold it over, and continue on to round seven. So for rounds seven, eight, nine, and 10, four rounds total, seven, eight, nine, 10, for four rounds in a row, we're only gonna do single crochets into every single stitch around. So just four rounds of just single crochets. There should be 24 stitches per round. So that's four rounds of 24 stitches, all single crochets. And it's pretty easy. This is, this is a nice uh, time for you to kind of zone out um, I mean, you can count your stitches if you want, try not to miss any stitches, but only 24 just regular single crochets all the way around. This is kind of the, um, the easy part of this pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up our four rounds of just single crochets uh, really quick. It'll, uh, and I'll be back in just a moment and we'll continue on to uh, round 11 after that. 
Okay, and that's gonna be the end of our four rounds of single crochets. Now, here's a pro tip. If you want to look back and count your stitches, uh, count your rounds really easily, all you need to do is look at the last stitch that you made right here, and if you look up, you'll find this round right here. This one looks a little bit different. So if you look, here's our Vs from all of our single crochets, right? But in this round, you can kind of see there's two Vs going into the same place. And that's gonna be because this is an increased stitch. There's two stitches into one place. Whereas this round only has one stitch into one place. That means that this round right here is gonna be your sixth round where you did your last increase. And the four rounds after it, where there are only one single crochet, one, two, three, four, those are gonna be the four rounds that you just made. You can also count backwards by using the stitch marker, of course, and I did something here where I only used the stitch marker for the first stitch, or for the first round of these repeats, and then I left the stitch marker clean so that I can count one, two, three, four. That was the last time I used the stitch marker. So it's a little bit easier to count your uh, rounds that way. All right, so that's going to be the end of round 10 in our, uh, four rounds of all single crochets, and we can continue on now to round 11. Let's pull our stitch marker here up, and for round 11, we're gonna start decreasing it down now. So we're gonna go down from 24 stitches down to 21 stitches, so we're going back down in our pattern. To do that, we're going to do six, six single crochets and then a decrease. For this pattern, I'm gonna be using a decrease called the invisible decrease. And don't worry, I'll show you how to do that when we get there. But if you're used to other kinds of decreases, you totally can use a, a variety of different decreases if you'd like to. Um, I do have a video tutorial that I'll link right here for uh, three different kinds of decreases um, to, that you can use. But my favorite to use is the invisible decrease because it is the most hidden and hard to see in your patterns. Uh, and it's just my favorite kind of decrease to use for amigurumi in uh, in particular. Okay, so for round 11 here, we've got six single crochets and then an invisible decrease. So we're gonna work around this tail end and do six single crochets, and then I'll show you how to make an invisible decrease. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, to get there, and then now we're going to do an invisible decrease. For our invisible decrease, we're gonna work under the front loops only of the next two stitches at the same time. So again, the front loops are gonna be the same as what you did right here when we changed from yellow to red, the loop closest to you right here. Not the loop furthest away, because that's gonna be the back loop, but the loop closest to you. And we wanna work under this front loop and this front loop at the same time. So you're under both of these front loops simultaneously. To do that, we're gonna take our crochet hook, point up from the bottom like this and poke straight up to get under that first front loop. And then loop your crochet hook around to get into position under your next front loop and then poke straight up under that next front loop. So now you're under two at the same time. Once you're under both of those front loops, we can yarn over with the end attached to the ball and scoop it under these two front loops at the same time and do a single crochet. The easiest way is like always to twist your yarn so that it's facing where that hole is and then scoop it like that to make sure you're under all of those loops at the same time. Once you've pulled through those loops, we can yarn over again and pull through two loops to finish up that invisible decrease. And you kind of see how it really hides where that decrease is. All right, so that's the repeat. We're gonna repeat that same process three times total. So there's our first one. Let's do it again though. Now, the tricky part in the next stitch after your decrease is where that next stitch goes. A lot of people ask, where do you put the stitch after the decrease? And it's kind of hard to see. This is actually the second loop that we used for that decrease. So the next stitch is actually right here. The easiest way to look at it is if you're kind of looking at it straight ahead, you can see those both those loops. Whereas you look at this one, it kind of is obscured. Now, if you look over it, obviously you can see where those two loops are, but that's not it. It's gonna be the next stitch right here, like that. Okay, so we want six single crochets and then our invisible decrease. So one, two, three, four, five, and six single crochets. And then now we'll do our other, our, our second invisible decrease. We'll go front loop, poking from the bottom up, front loop, poking from the bottom up, and then a single crochet with a twist and a scoop. Pull through two. There's our second repeat. 
one more repeat, six single crochets, and then a final invisible decrease to finish up this round. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then our last invisible decrease, front loop, front loop, twist and tuck for single crochet. That's going to be the end of round 11. You can kind of see how your piece is starting to get pulled in. And you can see now uh, that, that that invisible decrease is very hidden. Okay, so we can pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round 12. This is gonna be the last round that we do before we add our face, if you wanna add a face. For round 12, we're going to basically be doing the same thing, but instead of doing six single crochets between invisible decreases, we're gonna do five. So we're gonna do five single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated three times total to bring your stitch count down from 21 stitches, which is our current stitch count, down to 18 stitches around. So that the trick here is we're trying to get down to 18 stitches in a very uh, slow way. So we're gonna do five single crochets and then one invisible decrease. So there's one, two, three, four, and five single crochets like that. And then our invisible decrease, front loop and front loop, and then single crochet. There we go. So I'm just gonna repeat that process two more times for three repeats total. Uh, and that'll bring our stitch count down. So that's four and five, and then invisible decrease like that. All right, last one, five single crochets, two, three, four, and five. And then our final invisible decrease front loop only, front loop only, and single crochet like that. And that is going to be the end of round 12. Now, before we continue on to round 13, we do wanna add a face. Now, obviously you do not have to add a face if you don't want to, you can just continue on to round 13 here. But if you are gonna add a face, I'd pull the loop out a bit and we're just going to add a simple face into the center um, of our piece here. Now, the first thing we wanna do is we actually, uh, I usually like adding the eyes first and then the smile, but sometimes I do the other way around. Um, specifically in this pattern though, I have written down exactly where the eyes go. The eyes are gonna go, uh, from, for me, I like putting the eyes into round eight, stitches number nine and 13. To find round eight, stitches nine and 13, I'm gonna count up from the top. So that's gonna be, this right here is gonna be where round one is. So there's one and two, three, four is gonna be your first round with red five, six, seven, and eight. So this is gonna be round eight, if I just follow this all the way around. Now I'm gonna count the stitches. I'm looking for stitch number nine and then stitch number 13. So the one we're in right now is stitch number one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's gonna be nine. And then if we keep counting over, we'll go 10, 11, 12, and 13. So I can kind of just go like this actually and use my needle through both of them so you can kind of see where the eyes are gonna go. We're gonna take our safety eyes. I like using six millimeter safety eyes in this pattern. You can obviously use bigger ones if you feel more comfortable with that, um, but I'm gonna be using six millimeter and we're just gonna place this six millimeter eye into our first spot right here, like that. And then into our second spot right here, like that. Now, before I lock these eyes into place, I'm gonna use just a little bit of white yarn to create little tiny cheeks. This will just make really cute little cheeks for us. Obviously not like super important, but I think it does add a lot to the design. Um, and it's a little bit easier to add the cheeks now before you lock the eyes into place. So we're gonna take our needle and you want some white yarn. You do not need very much white yarn, uh, I believe that's enough, or whatever color you wanna use. Um, uh, yellow yarn actually would look really cute as well, um, but we'll just use white because I already cut it. And we're gonna thread this onto our needle. And we wanna come out from where each of these eyes are 
individually, of course, and then over one stitch to the outside. So I'm gonna come out right to the bottom right here, right where that eye is, like so. And then we're just gonna go over one stitch to the right, because this is the, uh, well, left eye technically, but just like that. So just over one stitch, and then we can just double knot it on the inside. That little bit really adds a lot in my opinion. So we're just gonna double knot these two on the inside. Um, it's kind of nice that you can do like really, really subtle customizations like this and just completely change the design of your amigurumi in a really meaningful way, in my opinion. Like I just think it just adds a lot with not doing a lot of work, um, but it kind of gives your character more character. Okay, so that one's gonna be the first one. Now we're gonna clean them up in just a second after we lock the eyes into place, but uh, this is a good start. So that's gonna be, there's one, and then we're gonna do the same over here. We're gonna go straight out from where the eye is, like that. Try not to poke the eye out completely. And then we'll just go one stitch over to the right, I'm sorry, to the left, like this, to the outside, I should say, and then pull it in. And then we'll just, just like before, we'll just double knot these two on the inside. Make sure they're the tail ends though, like this. There's one. You don't need to tie it too tight. If you tie it too tightly, the yarn's gonna be pulled on the inside and you don't really want that. Now before I, uh, I'm just gonna stuff this actually into our whole piece. We'll just use it as stuffing um, because there's not really any point to cut it and get rid of it and stuff. Might as well use it. And then finally, we wanna lock these eyes into place. So I'm just gonna take this locking mechanism, place it onto the back of this eye and just kind of wiggle it and push it closed like that. It'll push it in. There's one and into the next one right here, like this. Wiggle into place and then just, gah, gomp, there we go. Didn't wanna go in there at first. Okay, now uh, we do wanna like, I like to kind of push these down a little bit, kind of like shape where those cheeks are a little bit so that they're kind of under where the eyes are just a bit. And then uh, the last thing we wanna do for our face is add a smile. Now I'm gonna add just a really simple smile. You can do a bunch of different faces. You could do a uh, little kissy faces or a little fat face. I've done a few different ones in a few different patterns. Um, if you wanna check out my uh, candy corn video or my turkey leg video, I show how to do a chubby face. Um, let's see, uh, here's the turkey leg with a chubby face. But in this pattern, I'm just gonna do a simple smile. So we're gonna use some of our black thread here. By the way, if you have any requests for other kinds of faces to do in the future, um, to do a tutorial for different kinds of faces, please let me know in the comments. I'm definitely interested in making a variety of different faces if you're uh, interested in any ones in specific. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of a black thread here and thread it onto our needle. And then I'll just twist it here. And a simple smile is really, really easy. All we wanna do is come out from one stitch over from either side of the eye, it's up to you. Let's go like this, like that. And then we're gonna go over two stitches, one and two, into that stitch like that. This is gonna create a nice horizontal bar, like so. We, can, we could just be happy with that and just be like, okay, we've got kind of a grumpy ornament. Maybe he's not really into Christmas or he's just bored or something. But let's make it a smile instead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out through the center of the stitch between the two ends here. So right, it can be kind of hard to get in there, right there like that. So see how I'm in the center of a stitch? So we're gonna come out right through that center with our thread like that. Now we wanna go around the bar, the black bar that you made. So you wanna go around the bar like this and then back into that same stitch that you came out of like that, straight through that same exact stitch. And we're just gonna pull it through like that. And notice how it's gonna pull it into a tight little smile. Isn't that nice? Super easy. And then all you need to do is thread the ends here onto 
uh, or I mean double knot the ends here. So we're just gonna double knot them. There's one and two. You don't have to double knot it too tight. That's probably just fine. And I'm like our uh, white yarn, I'm just gonna throw that thread on the inside because I don't really need it anymore. And it'll just do a little bit more good on the inside of our piece than it will just thrown in the trash. Okay, so there is our perfect smile and our face. Um, the last thing I wanna do before we continue on to round 13 is do a super secret giveaway. This is a super duper secret giveaway for those that skip around in the pattern. They won't know about this. This is only for me and you because I'm pretty sure everybody's skipping this part of the pattern. <laughs> so for our super secret giveaway, I'm gonna give away Let's do three month membership to our website so that way you have access to a bunch of other alternative patterns. All you need to do to enter this giveaway, go into the comments down below and comment with anything that you wanna say, but include a, let's see, what kind of emoji would be just the most ridiculous weird emoji to have on this pattern? Let's do an elephant. Post a comment and use the elephant emoji. I'm gonna choose my uh, or one person at random in a few weeks and I will choose that person at random. I'll reply to the comment and I'll tell them that they won uh, the giveaway. I'll also do a post on social media and let you know if you've won the giveaway too. Um, but this is only for us. So keep it between us. Don't mention that this is for the giveaway or anything like that in the comment. Just just post a, an emoji of an elephant and everybody else is going to be like, why is everybody posting an emoji of an elephant? I don't know. I think it'd be fun. Uh, so go ahead and do that and I'll choose a winner in a few weeks. Okay, now let's, now shh, don't say anything and we're going to continue on as if I never did that. Okay, so now we're going to continue on to round 13. For round 13, we're going to pull our stitch marker up here and just pull our uh, stitch marker sorry, our stitch marker up and pull our loop around our crochet hook is what I meant to say. And for round 13, we're gonna try decreasing down from 18 down to 12. To do that, we're going to do one single crochet into our first stitch and then an invisible decrease into our second stitch. And then we'll repeat that process all the way around to go down from 18 to 12 stitches around. So that's gonna be six repeats of that. One single crochet, one invisible decrease. So we'll go into our first one right here, do a single crochet into our first stitch like that. And then we'll do an invisible decrease into the next one. For the invisible decrease, we're gonna go front loop and front loop, and then a single crochet like that, just like how we did it in the few rounds before. So there's our first repeat, one single crochet, one invisible decrease. Let's just keep doing that around. One single crochet, and then one invisible decrease for front loop and front loop, and then our single crochet like that. So there's our second repeat. Here's our third front loop, front loop, single crochet, there we go. And again, if you haven't yet, please like this video down below, subscribe to the channel, super duper free and very easy way for you to support this channel. So if you like what's going on here, that is just a great way to support the channel and just show your appreciation. Okay, this is gonna be our last decrease and that should bring us down to 12 stitches around uh, and that'll be the end of round 13. Now, really quick, before I get into round 14, I do want to stuff it just a little bit, just because it's a little bit easier to stuff it now, um, a little before the next round. So I'm just going to pull my crochet hook out. I'm just going to take the stuffing. Um, I think this is probably enough for the, the pre-stuffing. I think that's, we'll say, we'll say this is like stuff it mostly. Don't stuff fully. You don't need to add all the stuffing you've got yet, um, but just add a little bit of stuffing in there. Uh, if you want to add anything else like a, I don't know, mini magnet or um, a squeaker or whatever you want to add into this now is your chance. Um, but that should be good for right now and we'll stuff it up a little bit more after this last round. Get our crochet hook in there. Okay, now I'm going to leave my stitch marker on the outside here because I want to pull it out. I want to be able to get rid of this stitch marker at the end, and it's a little easier if we leave it on the outside. So uh, we'll just continue on to round 14. For round 14, our final round of stitches, we just want to work an invisible decrease into every single stitch around. That's going to be six invisible decreases total. So we're going to go under the front loops of both 
stitches here, so that's one and two, and then a single crochet with a twist and a scoop, like that. Okay, so there's one. Again, we want six of those. So there's one and two, three. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because I can't fit my finger in there. So I kind of like to pinch it like this to get access to my front loops. So I pinch it and then I find my next one right here, like that. Okay, a few more, front loop and front loop, then a single crochet through that for our invisible decrease. Two more, front, oops, and front, like that. And then finally, this last one's gonna be front loop and front loop. Notice how I pulled the loop out a little bit to give my crochet hook a little bit more room to wiggle, by the way. It kind of helps a little. And I'll pull it tighter and then do our single crochet to finish that last invisible decrease. Okay, so that's gonna be six invisible decreases. We can just cut the yarn now. You do not need a long end at all. That's probably more than enough. We're just gonna be using this to sew it closed anyhow. And we're just gonna pull it all the way out like that. Uh, now we're going to get rid of this stitch marker. So we're just gonna go off to the top. It's best to do this like a few stitches at a time instead of just doing all the stitches. So let's do a few at a time. That way it doesn't pull too many holes through your piece. That's probably fine. We'll just go ahead and pull those all out like that. And look at that, didn't leave any holes. That's pretty nice. Okay, um, now before we sew it closed, we wanna add just a little bit more stuffing. So you wanna grab something to stuff this with. You can use the back of your crochet hook if it's small enough. But for me, my crochet hook is maybe just a little bit annoying and hard to get in there. So I'm just gonna use a uh, pencil instead. The eraser end of a pencil is really good for stuffing. And I'm just gonna tuck a little bit more stuffing in here. We don't need too much stuffing. You know, just, just we, um, well, here, I'll, I'll show you the trick. The, the trick that I like to use for how much stuffing to add is you wanna be able to squish it and it to bounce back into place. So if I squish it right now, notice how it kinda holds that dent just a little bit. So I want it to more squish out like that so it keeps its shape after you've already squished it. As we get closer to getting the right amount of stuffing, you wanna add a small amount of stuffing at a time. You don't wanna like overdo it with stuffing. So just, just a bit of stuffing at a time is all you really need. There we go. Okay. It might be fun now to stuff it with something like, I don't know, a, a little note. Like if you wanna write a note to Santa or something, that'd be kinda of cute. I used to do that in high school. I would give people gifts and uh, write a little secret and then stuff uh, a little note with my secret into the inside of my amigurumi and they would never know about it, but I knew about it and that was kind of fun. That's pretty good. Maybe we do just, just a little tiny bit more, like that much more. Adding small amounts of stuffing near the end here is the best way to make sure that you get it um, stuffed but not overstuffed. You'll know if it's overstuffed because you'll be able to see the stuffing actually through uh, like through the stitches. You know what, I'm just gonna finish this up and put the rest of the stuffing in here. I don't think we're gonna get overstuffed, so I think it'll be all right. Okay. We can also, you could also stuff it with this, but now it's a little too late. Okay. The last thing we wanna do is sew it closed. So we're gonna take this end, thread it onto our needle like that, and we're just gonna sew closed. To sew closed, all you need to do is take your needle, thread it on the end, and go through the front loops only of all the stitches around. So right here is gonna be the next front loop, just like that. So we just go through that front loop, pull it through, and just do that through all of them. So there's one and two, there should be six of these. Here's three. Four. Notice how I hold it down with my pinky and hold it to the side to get access to the stitch. There's five. This will be our last one right there. Will be six. Now you can pull it nice and tight. I like to hold it right here at the bottom and then just pull tight at where the knot is and then it'll close that up. See? Then we want to take this end, go straight through the center, 
and then pretty much anywhere you want to on the back. It does not really matter. Like that, and we'll just pull it all the way in, and we want to kind of pull it just tight enough so that it makes it a flat bottom. Like that. And then we will cut the yarn nice and close towards the end of the knot right there, and then just squish it a little bit so that that knot gets stuffed in there. And there we have it, a little, tiny, adorable crocheted ornament. Let's look at it from all our angles. And it's even got its hanger built in, nice and easy. Thank you so, so much for crocheting this pattern along with me. I really hope you enjoyed making it as much as I enjoyed designing it. And this one was pretty fun to design. I, of course, wanted to design it so that it was beginner friendly, but I wanted to add a few little advanced techniques for those crocheters out there that wanted to like try something new and didn't want something too beginner friendly. So I hope you liked that. I hope it didn't confuse you too much and I hope it didn't go too slow. But if you did, please like this video down below and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's a great way to support the channel, as I've said a few times. And uh, yeah, just, you know, like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. And if you want to check out more Christmas-themed patterns, you can find them at clubcrochet.com slash Christmas. I also have a variety of other patterns like little jellyfish and a bunch of variety of different patterns like little, uh, you know, triceratops and stuff like that. You can find those on my website, clubcrochet.com. Um, okay, well, I think that's about everything that I wanted to say. Um, thank you again for watching and crocheting along with me. I really appreciate you. Um, yeah. Pasta la pizza, happy hooking, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, bye. I wish I had Christmas bells. Oh, you know what? This guy's got a little Christmas bell.